Hi, this is Jennifer Danalo from Norris Medical Library. And as part of your tra transition to clinical practice, I'm gonna be talking about mobile apps for clinical information. There are basically two different classes of apps that I'll talk about today. One is library subscribed apps. So these are mobile apps that generally require some sort of fee to gain access to. Um, however, they're free to USC affiliates. And I'll walk through the process of how you set those apps up on your device. Then I'll also talk about free apps, which are available for anyone to download from the App Store or Google Play. And the ones that we recommend are, have been vetted by librarians. And in that vetting process, we look at who produces the app, uh, what kind of information they're providing, and we also get feedback from clinicians and other folks about what what apps work well. So as we go through the rest of this video, I'm not going to be using the PowerPoint any longer, but feel free to follow along uh, in the PowerPoint, or if you wanna grab your device and uh, start setting up the apps too, that is more than welcome. So in order to set up the apps on your device, the first place that you're going to want to go on your laptop or uh, desktop computer is the Norris Medical Library homepage. And on this homepage, in this popular resources box, there is a link to the mobile resources guide. On the mobile resources guide, we have our recommended apps organized by app type. The ones that you're probably going to be most interested in include the clinical info and drug info tabs. I'll go ahead and click on the clinical info tab. And you can see that we have them organized by USC paid apps and then also free apps. Um, these are the USC paid apps are the ones that I mentioned earlier that are subscribed to by the library. And the first one that I want to talk about is up to date. So for the USC paid apps, the process is generally the same for setting up your account and uh, the app on your device. You're probably already familiar with using UpToDate on the web interface, and maybe you already have the mobile app installed. And if that's the case, feel free to fast forward a few minutes and just skip this part of the video. But for everyone else, your first step in setting up the app will be to actually go to UpToDate. And so I'm gonna click on this link in step number one and will take me to this random page where I'm gonna click up to date on this link that doesn't actually look like a link. So from the homepage, I'm just gonna go up to the upper right hand corner and click on register and you can register for an account, try and pick a username and password uh, that you will remember. And once you have that set up, you can, uh, you can log into your account from here, though it's not uh, necessary. And when you do log into your account on the UpToDate website, you can go to the My Account section. And what you'll see here is uh, UpToDate will actually track your CME credits uh, when you use your personal account. So on this My Account page, you can um, submit your CME credits. Also here, you can look at your subscription. So one thing about using the UpToDate app is the first time you log into the mobile app, that sets your initial uh, certification for mobile access. And you have 90 days from that day to use the mobile app. And once it expires, I'm gonna click view expiration date. You can see that my access is now valid through September 7th. That means that on September 7th, the mobile app will log me out and I won't be able to re-access the mobile app until I come back to up to date through the Norris Medical Library homepage and log into my personal account. That just reactivates my up to date personal account and lets them know that I'm still affiliated with USC so that I can maintain access to the mobile app. All right, the next step in this process is to download the app onto my mobile device, whether that's through the App Store or Google Play. And this is what the app will look like when I open it up. I can log into my up-to-date account that I just set up. Upon initial login, there'll be this license agreement. I can just click accept and it'll take me to the up-to-date app homepage. Um, so you can see here, there's a basic search box up at the top. 
Um, there are a few calculators here in UpToDate, and that includes calculators like um, for APGAR score, um, a blood ethanol concentration estimation, BMI, um, those types of calculators. Uh, as I mentioned, it does track your CME credits, and you can see under my name uh, that I have 19. So that those will be really useful. Um, there's also a patient education section, so you can <coughs> access those materials directly. Um, and search in the app is exactly the same as you would see uh, online. It does also maintain your search history, so you can see what other um, searches you've done in the past in case you need to redo repeat a search rather quickly. In this particular case, I'm going to look up CAUTI, C-A-U-T-I, and CAUTI stands for Catheter Associated Urinary Tract Infection. Uh, just like in the web version, I have adult, pediatric, and patient filters up here at the top, and if I click on just the first uh, result, it takes me to the up-to-date page just like you would expect to see in the website. So if you're on, if you're on your phone or a smaller uh, screen, you may have to look for uh, the menu that's over here on the left side. It may be um, at the very top of the page and you may have to scroll past or um, at the bottom. So using the up-to-date app is pretty straightforward and pretty similar to using the UpToDate website. An important thing to remember with accessing UpToDate through the mobile app is that it does only have that 90-day subscription or certificate period. So at the end of the 90 days, you will have to go back to the Norris Medical Library homepage, access UpToDate through that page, and log into your personal account, and that will reset your expiration date. I can also access my account information by clicking my name and I can see my expiration date. The other thing that you uh, want to keep track of is you can only use your account on up to two mobile devices and if I go to manage my devices it will list what devices I have. So that comes in really handy if for example if you switch phones or something like that you can delete um, old, old devices. So back on the Mobile Resources Clinical Info tab, the next app that I want to talk about is Clinical Key. Clinical Key is a little bit different from UpToDate. Instead of summaries, Clinical Key is a, a database for book, chapters, journal articles, and guidelines. The process for setting up the mobile app is exactly the same as what we did in UpToDate. So you would go to Clinical Key, there's a register link in the top right corner, set up that account. You're gonna go and download the Clinical Key app and then log into the app on your device. I am already logged into my Clinical Key account. It's a pretty basic interface, just like what we saw with UpToDate. There is a search box in the center. Uh, Clinical Key also tracks your CME credits. Uh, in Clinical Key, in up, as in UpToDate, it also uh, remembers your recent searches. And again, I'm gonna search for CAUTI. I'm interested in finding some guidelines about treatment and prevention of CAUTI. And as I mentioned before, Clinical Key has book chapters, it has um, articles, and if you look above the title and the results, you'll see it tells you what kind of resource you're looking at. So the first uh, result is a book chapter, the second one says Medline, and if you remember, Medline is um, a subset of PubMed that's focused on uh, clinical medicine. So my screen is a little bit cut off in this recording, but at the very bottom of my screen is a gray bar that says Filter By, and if I click on that, it'll bring up some filter categories. So I mentioned that I was looking at, I was interested in finding guidelines on prevention of CAUTI. So in the filters, if I click content type, I can then select uh, those different options for the types of content that are in clinical key. I can click guidelines, and that gives me 14 results. So I had almost 3,000, now I have 14. And if you look above the title again, you'll see that it tells you that there are guidelines, there are NICE guidelines. NICE guidelines are uh, guidelines in the UK. And you can see that the first guideline is actually prevention of CAUTI. 
And so that's exactly what I'm looking for. Maybe instead of guidelines, I actually want to find some systematic reviews or randomized control trials. If I click study type, um, that will take me to a filter and I can click systematic review and get straight to those high quality uh, pieces of evidence. And some journal articles in Clinical Key are full text, others are from Medline. So in this particular example, if I click on relationship of catheter associated urinary tract infection to mortality and length of stay, um, that is a Medline article. And you'll see that I get the abstract, can scroll down, I get those nice mesh terms, um, just like I would see if I found this article in PubMed. And just like in PubMed, there's also that find it at USC link. So when I click on the find it at USC button, it will open up a tab in my browser that takes me to the full text of um, the article. So it's pretty easy to get access to that information through Clinical Key. The next app I want to talk about is called UCentral. So back here at the Clinical Info tab on the Mobile Resources Guide, I can scroll down and see the UCentral app. And just like with UpToDate and Clinical Key, I need to click on that UCentral link, click on this link that doesn't actually look like a link on this page, and I am to the UCentral homepage. Uh, the only reason I'm going through this whole, whole step set of steps is that it's a slightly different for you central instead of going here to the sign on link in the upper corner i actually want to click this mobile tab in the center and then i can register for an account and that's really the only difference between um, setting up you central and setting up the other types of or the other apps that we've already talked about so i'll click the register button it's telling me that i get access through the university of southern california I click continue and I can set up my account. All right, I have my account set up and I've logged into the app and it's important to note with UCentral that sometimes it has updates to run. So the first time you log in, there'll be several updates that it will need to install. And sometimes it can take um, a few minutes, depending on your connection speed for all of those updates. So UCentral is a little bit different than Clinical Key in UpToDate in that it is a finite set of clinical books. And so this is uh, where we subscribe to the five minute consult series. So here on the UCentral app homepage, um, at the top you'll, you can see the list of books and resources that are available through UCentral. The first one is the Medline search. Uh, so this is going to search those Medline articles that I mentioned um, are also available in Clinical Key. Um, I've heard good things about this Medline search in that it's relatively easy to use. Uh, so if I click on it, I can search for Cotty. Uh, I get a list of resources, but I really, I'm really just interested in finding some systematic reviews or meta-analyses. So if I click on pub type, it'll open up a list of the different filters that I can, um, that I can use. So if I select meta-analysis, I can get a set of meta-analyses. To get back to the home, I'm going to click the house at the top. So back at the home page, um, I see the list of four uh, five-minute consult books that we have, clinical, emergency, pediatric, and sports medicine. If I swipe to the left, I can see more resources that are available. There's a few calculators here. Um, we have the Harriet Lane Handbook, which is a common pediatric handbook. Um, there's a John Hopkins Antibiotics Guide and more John Hopkins guides. And if I swipe all the way to the left, there is the um, Merck manual as well. Now I could go to an individual title if I want, or up in the upper right hand corner, there is a general search. So if I want to continue looking for information about Cotty, I can um, type that in there and it's going to give me a list of uh, resources that are available and uh, the icon on the left side indicates which resource it's from. So the first one's from the John Hopkins Antibiotics Guide. Um, this is doing an index search. I can also click full text search and that'll change um, my results set to just the Merck manual and then the five minute clinical consult. And if I click the nosocomial infections, it'll take me straight to uh, that section of the text.
And you can see that in the five minute clinical consult. And as this text is intended for clinical information, um, you can see that it's giving me a description, it's giving me the epidemiology, but it's all bulleted. So it's really quick, uh, easy to read information. I can scroll through here to find the information that I'm, that I'm looking for. This app is really great for finding um, information on a variety of clinical topics in a bulleted, easy to use um, format. Back at the Mobile Resources Clinical Info page, the last paid app that I want to talk about is called Visual DX. And if I scroll down to the bottom, Visual DX is the last one on the list. And just like with the other paid apps that we've downloaded, I'll click on the Visual DX link and then click on this link that doesn't look like a link and open up the Visual DX homepage. So Visual DX is a little di bit different from the other resources that we've talked about today because you can search by symptom medication or diagnosis, but it also has a differential uh, diagnosis builder, which is a really nice tool. And here for mobile access uh, at the homepage, you just want to click the get mobile get the mobile app and you can create your personal account. And once you've created that personal account, you can go download the app from the App Store or Google Play and then log in using the same information. All right, so once you get the app installed and logged into your account, it'll look something like this. And there's a couple different ways to approach um, Visual DX. You could enter in a symptom or something like that. I like to search for uh, acne. And you'll see that you get some similar information to what you see in um, up to date, but it's a little bit more succinct um, than what you get there, a little less detailed. Um, you get a synopsis, there are some ICD 10 codes, um, you can also get SNOMED codes, um, what you should look for, diagnostic pearls, um, you get these differential diagnoses and um, information about best tests and management and medication. Um, but really the, the key feature of Visual DX that makes it a little bit different is its incorporation of images. I can scroll through the column on the right and look at a variety of pictures of, um, of this particular diagnosis. So the other important feature of Visual DX is this quick start differential builder. And if I click on that, there's just general symptoms, but then there's also a uh, specialty specific, um, such as dermatology, neuropsych, gastrointestinal. Um, I can click on any of these. If I click on dermatology, I'll get a different set of options that can start out my uh, differential diagnosis builder. So if I click single skin lesion, I'll give, I can give information about uh, my patient. So age, uh, gender, click done. Um, and then for skin lesion type, click smooth, um, papule plaque. Um, it then gives me a few additional options for narrowing that down. So if I click smooth plaque, new location of skin finding. Um, so in this case, it is on the leg. It can also describe any signs such as, if, is it painful? Is it tender, hemorrhagic? I'm gonna click painful. Um, and if onset of finding, it's developed steadily over weeks to months. Um, and in terms of medical history, um, you can tell if there's any uh, history of any immunosuppressants suppression, pregnancy, any of those. And I can click view differential in the lower right hand corner and it's going to give me um, the diagnoses that match all of those particular findings and then also a few others that uh, match some or most of the symptoms that I that I selected. So I have a few more resources that I want to talk about. Uh, the rest of the apps that I'll talk about are all free, so they're available to download from the App Store or the Google Play, or from Google Play um, by anyone. Uh, the first one is uh, the CDC vaccine schedule. 
And as I mentioned before, we vet these and we look at the organization. And so this one is from the CDC. So it's kind of a respectable organization. Um, and this is really very basic information about what the vaccine schedules are for different populations. So you can look at child, adolescent, adults, um, any catch up. If I click on child, it's going to give me a chart that looks exactly like what you get if you get a paper vaccine schedule. I can click on the names of any of these uh, vaccines to get some basic information about what it is. I can also click see additional information to get additional information about that vaccine, along with some links to outside information. So it's a pretty basic and um, comprehensive resource for strictly looking at vaccines. Very helpful if you're in pediatrics or family medicine. The next app that I'm gonna talk about is called Hippocrates. And um, Hippocrates is a drug information um, app. And it's important to note that Hippocrates has both a free version and a subscribed version. The university does not subscribe to Hippocrates, so if you want to get the paid version, um, then you'd have to make that decision on your own. The main difference between uh, the two different uh, versions is the size of the drug database. Um, I haven't heard any complaints from clinicians or people who are using this app in terms of not being able to find the information that they're looking for. So you can stick with the free one until, um, until that happens, maybe. So first of all, there's just basic drug lookup. So for example, I could look up sertraline, um, and it'll tell me that sertraline is a generic name, but then there's also Zoloft, which is the, um, the brand name. If I click sertraline, it gives me the dosing information for adults, pediatrics. If there's a black box warning, it'll have it listed there as well. Um, and information about adverse or common reactions. If you look over here, on the right side, there are some alter alternatives. Um, it also provides you with drug interactions, so you can um, do a quick interaction check right there within the drug information. And so again, this is just really quick, uh, basic information about drug and um, drug dosing. Um, in addition to just the drug database, there's also this interaction checker. In this particular case, I can search for a particular drug um, I can look in uh, different sections. So for example, in cardiovascular, I can look at different drug classes and select them. So if I select a beta blocker, um, I can get a list of all the beta blockers and click those and add those over here to the list on the side. Um, in this particular case, I already have a few drugs listed. Um, and there's only one uh, interaction, and that's between Zoloft and dextromethorphan. Uh, and I can look at that interaction and see what the advisement is in terms of uh, taking that into account. Right. And going back to the Hippocrates homepage, um, the other uh, nice tool that's a part of Hippocrates is the pill ID. So when your patient comes with their baggie full of pills, uh, you can help identify what some of those pills are. Um, you can add imprints up at the top. Um, you can select uh, shapes and you can select colors um, and it'll provide a list of uh, possible uh, drugs. The imprints are really what, what are going to help you get to, uh, get to the drug type. Okay. So that's uh, Hippocrates. So a good resource for drug information. And then the last uh, app that I would want to talk about is called EPSS. And EPSS stands for Electronic Preventive Services Selector. And this is produced by the Agency for Healthcare and Research Quality. And it provides information about uh, recommended services for preventative care. So again, this is really good for pediatrics or family medicine. Um, so service recommendations within this app are uh, graded 
on a ABCD scale. And if you click grade definitions, you can see what the definitions of those different grades are and bring that into your clinical decision making. If you search for recommendations, you can enter information about your patient. So if I have a 57 year old male who's obviously not pregnant, um, is a smoker, and is sexually active, if I click search, it'll provide me the recommendations um, for that particular patient. Um, it starts out with the A recommendation, so in this case, colorectal, HIV, high blood pressure. So again, just a really helpful resource for uh, looking for information about preventative care. And those are all of the apps that I was gonna talk about um, today. If you have any questions about uh, these apps or run into any issues, please feel free to get in touch with me or for anything else uh, in your remaining two years here. I'd be happy to help out and thank you very much.